We've got one question for you today, and it's who does your brand want to be when it grows up? Today, we are diving into the word alignment, and I know, I know you've been hearing it many, many, many times over for the past few years, but it matters, y'all. So let's get started. Welcome to the Grow Your Business for Good show. This is a place where coaches and consultants gather so you can learn how to lead a world-class business that does not tax your time, your energy, or your financial resources. We are your hosts, M. Shannon Hernandez. And Amy Hager of the Joyful Business Revolution. And our number one goal is to bring you clarity and insight on how to grow your business for good. So as Shannon said, the word alignment is insanely overused in the online business space. And while it may deserve that strong eye roll, it's often, it's actually really important. And it's an important concept that can make or break your business. And so as we continue to dive into our expand method, and for if you haven't catched the past episodes of this season, we've covered what the expand method is. And then Each letter in the word expand stands for something. So we've already done E, X, P, and today we are on A. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the expand method here on our screen. And um, it is our unique process that we really help our clients um, expand their already working well business without burnout or imploding. And today we're going to talk about alignment, where we're really focused on um, three key growth areas. And these areas are often overlooked or even pushed aside because there's no pressure or no, yeah, no pressure to really figure this thing out. But if we don't figure this out, we have found that we don't expand. Yeah, that graphic is a beautiful one, y'all. So um, it's linked in the companion blog posts. Um, that go out with this episode. And also you can find it in this blog series itself that we're running alongside. Um, So I think it's really important for everyone to understand, Amy, that this alignment we're talking about, it doesn't happen overnight, especially when our business is like in full motion and growing. Um, I just sat down this morning and told Amy, I went on a hike in the desert in Phoenix last week. And I had some real realizations about, Um, uh, you know, a particular program we've been running for quite a while. um, And maybe it needs a name change, or it needs a brand update, or it needs a location update. It's a retreat that we run. And so what I want everyone to really understand is that when you have a business that's working, you still can tune into alignment. And this is the tweaking, the adjusting Um, Rather than often starting from scratch, sometimes we do need to start from scratch. Um, You know, if it's just not working anymore, we got to like dial it back and go find the messaging that works. And so this alignment, this deep alignment, it's a process and it's an evolution. And really the first step that I love to recommend to our clients and what I do ourselves is that Every Monday, we have a coffee date with our business. We call this the CEO coffee date. And we really take an honest look at where we are right now um, in this season of business, in this cycle of business. And we look at, you know, a lot of things. But in particular, in this particular episode, we want to talk today about your brand culture, your brand values, and your leadership style. And once you really understand... um, what your brand values are, okay? And we're talking about things like our one of our brand values is generosity. We're getting ready to launch the Joy Tank, which is the very kind version of Shark Tank. <laughs> um, and we're excited about it, right? And and do yeah. we know if it's going to work? No. Hello, y'all. Welcome to marketing and business growth and evolution. You try things, right? But our Our value is generosity. Our value is profits for purpose. Our value is give back. And so we're going to try. We're going to start with kind of a first round of joy tank and see, see what happens from there, right? But if you don't know what your brand values are, you're you may constantly be switching from one initiative to the next initiative, 
um, because the brand values are the foundation of everything that you do. Right. Right. And from there, then we can work with you on your brand culture and your leadership style. Um, Amy, I was listening to a podcast this morning when I was out on a walk and it's someone that you and I have been kind of looking at their, um, how they teach sales around like social selling. And I realized in this uh, one little interview, um, there was a missing piece from the information we had been given versus what um, I heard as the process uh, that she actually teaches her clients. And it was so out of alignment with the brand values. And honestly, I was like, I'm going to tell you what it is in a minute, but I was like, oh, I'm moving this off the back burner. Like, I mean, I'm moving this to the back burner. And one of the missing pieces that, that I think I just love to, you know, brand values, I'll get your, your live and raw and real opinion right here. (laughs) Um, As soon as someone opts into their lead magnet, um, it's a name, first name, last name, phone number, opt in. Within two minutes, you're to pick up the phone and call them. Right. I read that too. I was actually reading that as one of their social media posts. And, you know, making sure that we find that alignment in our brand values, I think is really important. And I really don't feel like that's truly authentic. Like we do build really deep relationships and I do reach out to a lot of our listeners and a lot of the people who opt in. But I'm asking super thoughtful questions to make sure that they're able to use the resource that we've given them and inviting them into a conversation if it's the right time for them. I I don't want to waste anybody's time, but also, yeah, that, that hard and fast rule of calling somebody two minutes or doing a reach out two minutes after they fill the opt-in form out. I don't think that's our, that's, that's not us. It's and not us at all. And I knew when I like my whole body tightened up and I, I was first like, oh my God, if somebody did this to me, I would be really pissed off actually, because I haven't it even read the thing yet. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right? I at least need a little bit to ask a question. (laughs) Absolutely. Secondly, I don't even uh, pick up phone calls unless I know the phone number or you have an appointment on my fam, uh, including my family on my calendar. So I was just like, okay, we will take the parts of this that resonate with us and tweak it. But our brand value is not like calling someone two minutes after they opt in. I would never do that. And I would I would actually be really offended if somebody did that to me. Right. In fact, I don't even give my phone number in an opt-in form for that reason. That's the other thing too. You know, I just taught this past Friday and um, we did the content personality quiz like in the session because it's so helpful to know that as we're going through the material and one gentleman was like, well, I don't want to give you my email address. And I was like, well, then I, I can't give you your results And you're still going to benefit from our time together today, but that was, you know, that's his brand value and totally respect that. Um, And when we had a little bit of a conversation about why he doesn't give his email address out and why he didn't feel comfortable, he was like, well, that was the first thing you asked me to kick off our time together. After spending 90 minutes with me, he had no problem giving me his email address, but I have them take it at the beginning of our time. So that way they have time to get the email and know what their answers are so that the session could be more informative. So I also created a great opportunity to have a conversation with somebody. And so I think that's kind of intriguing as well. And I think it is a-okay for all of us to have our own brand values and to say this is for me and this isn't for me. Yeah, absolutely. So brand values is where we start first, all right? And from there, then we can help you develop out your brand culture and your leadership style. And the goal here of this part of the expand method is really to get all three of these areas working in harmony so that you can create a business that runs smoothly, makes more money, gives you more of the life that you want. And for Amy and I, that always includes travel and time off. Yeah. (laughs) We love it. And it is one of our company cultures as well. 
um, you know, joyful business revolution culture. Amy and I each have a calendar of where each person is going um, over the next year. And we're really careful not to double book us both out somewhere. Um, and it takes a lot of care and concern, but that's because we care about our clients and we don't want our clients also left with no coaches and no support when, you know, Amy's off in Hawaii for 10 days. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and sometimes that does part of our culture is one to make sure that our entire team is able to travel and take the time off and be with their family. And then, you know, there are those times though, that we do have to make that choice. And there's a, there's an opportunity for me to go on a trip with a friend of mine for their birthday, but it lands at the same time that Shannon's hiking the Camino. And so I've committed to, I'm going to still go on my time away, but I know that in the mornings and in the evenings, I am going to check in with our clients and I am going to have a couple hours each day to still meet with them so that they're not, they're not coachless or they're not having the connection that they need and the support that they need from us. But that's a conscious choice because we do value time and travel and I can do this. I can do this work anywhere. Right. And so I love when I can, you know, be able to do have that free flowing to do and be where I want to be, but still show up and serve the clients in, in the best way possible. Yeah. So y'all, I ignored this for a long time alignment, not like running a business completely out of alignment, but mm -hmm. doubling down on these three things, my leadership style, brand culture, and brand values. And so when I decided to double down on it, that's when things really started shifting for us. And we started attracting the people who had the same brand values and um, or had the same values. They shared our values. And I think that's really important because all of the clients that we bring in, I can say probably a hundred percent, they know that we value time off. And so it's not a big deal when one of us is gone. Right. <laughs> right. And it's not a big deal when we say we don't work Friday through Sunday and you shouldn't either. Let's get your calendar set up like that, right? Or whatever the days off are that they want. So Amy, let's kind of do a little deep dive into these three areas and let's talk about them in detail. Okay. So since we were just talking about brand culture, let's go ahead and, and dive into that. And so when when you are successfully creating that brand culture, it really displays common characteristics publicly. So that your followers, your aligned audience really knows the feel and the vibe to that brand. And that also is going to outperform your competition time over time. And, you know, I say, again, your messaging and your marketing are never working properly unless they're attracting and repelling. And a lot of times people are like, well, but I can help everyone. But do you really want to help everyone? So when we can really publicly share what our brand culture is and talk about that, that gives people the opportunity to say, I believe in that too, or I want to work with a company who is like that. So having that strong brand culture really helps you generate higher margins and really drives the customer's loyalty to you because they, they do agree. And I really think that having those key alliances is so foundational for strategic growth. And so even as you're looking at collaborators or affiliates or, you know, people who you want to work with, they may not be your clients, but you know that those relationships may generate opportunities to be in front of clients. When you have your brand culture public, it makes it so much easier for collaborators to say, I want to be a part of what you're doing at the Joyful Business Revolution, or no, I, you know, I believe in calling someone two minutes after they fill out the, the form. And so being public with your brand culture, I think is the one point that a lot of people do miss when, when they think about brand culture, if they, if they've actually thought of it. Yeah. And this is one of the things we really help our clients with in Joy Fueled is defining their brand culture. And I think it's really important that oftentimes you know, myself included, I can get stuck right here in the day to day, but I need to like be the eagle and fly up and look three years out and say, 
where do I want to be three years from now? And we talked about this in an earlier episode uh, around vivid vision, right? Doing your vivid vision um, in this particular uh, season of the podcast. But your vision for the future, which is like three years out, I can't really operate five and 10 years out. I, I don't think that's realistic. Um, but three years out, where do we want to be? What do we want to be achieving? Who wants to, who will we have on our team? Who will we be collaborating with? What kind of clients will we be calling in? These are things we actually have to start now with the brand culture, the brand values and your leadership style, right? So as we said at the top of this episode, this is a process. This is a, um, a fine tuning as you go along, but I'm going to encourage everyone to look those three years out and let's get that culture that you want three years from now and start taking baby steps toward it every step of the way. So then um, as we flow into, we talked a little bit about brand values and those are really the core set of guiding principles that shape every aspect of your business. And those values really determine your identity, your messaging, and your personality. And your values may shift and grow again as you shift and grow as a business and have those experiences as a leader. And that is okay, but you really want to make sure that your brand values is the narrative, your actions are really part of those brand values, like you're taking action and running them through those values. And it really should be the fundamental of all your decision making. And so without them, you know, you're just kind of empty promises in pretty colors, right? But if you are able to run every decision through your brand values, and again, articulate that as part of your messaging, that's where that sweet spot, again, is really going to show how you stand out from your competition. Yeah. So um, Amy doesn't know this yet. So Amy, I think I love dropping things on you right here. I know you tend to do this to me on our podcast. Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> well, I haven't spoken to you, but um, I do want to say that um, Carrie Ann Munts, dead, <laughs> and yep. I um, out in Phoenix this past weekend, we talked about bringing content creation on location to her photography studio. Ooh, that would be fun. See, so there's a brown value right there. So first of all, if Amy just says, oh, that would be fun. We know it's pretty much aligned because usually she'll be like, oh, let's think through that. But, you know, <laughs> I've had a couple of days to think through it. And, you know, Amy, when I said I want to do content creation on location, I want to take it on the road. We've got our first right. one coming up in Miami. And now Carrie Ann's like, well, what about Phoenix? And I'm like, this is the brand value. Like, this is what we envisioned, right? So Amy, I don't know if you remember, but Carrie Ann went back and pulled um, an offer you two had worked on yep. Uh, yep. two years prior. It's sitting in my inbox. It never, it wasn't the right time, right? For our brand, things shifted and it wasn't the right time. And so that's one thing um, I want everyone to know. You might develop something and then you're like, oh, this doesn't feel right. It's not the right time. Don't trash it completely. All right. Keep it because um, Amy, she sent it to me. And I, I think what I want to do is get you and her to link up and start thinking about the revision of that content into right. content creation on location to do really fun branded storytelling and headshots and, and content out in Phoenix at her studio. I like that. And so then knowing that one, it was an easy yes, when I'm thinking about saying yes or pausing to Shannon's idea, again, she's our manifesting generator, human design here at the Joyful Business Revolution. So why I can say yes is one of our brand values is travel. That that would mean Shannon and I would be going probably to Phoenix. We love traveling. We want to build community. Carrie Ann's in our community. We love working with her. She attracts really great community members. We attract very great community members. So that's two of our five brand values. Um, another brand value that we typically have is health and wellness. And I know, again, we can go hiking there, really great food there. Food is also one of our brand values. So again, so it's not hard for me to say an instant yes to that because I know our brand values. I know how this is going to quickly check all of those boxes. And so that's why it's a full body yes. If Shannon had said, hey, Amy, um, I don't know, someone in is an area that we don't want to travel to said, hey, let's do a collaboration. That would have I would have instantly paused and said, well, do we really want to go there? 
Well, is that a place you really want to travel to? Because you know, I've been asked to go to New Zealand and Australia for years. I continue to turn it down because one, the flight is very long, right? Uh, not really joyful. Um, but number two, I can't serve them if they decide to come on because I'm not willing to change the hours I work. And we have had people in that region of the world sign up and they're getting up to join us on zoom at like two and three in the morning. And you know, that's on them if they want to, but I don't feel good going in and speaking to an audience and then saying, oh, you have to get up at 2 a.m. if you want to work with us. Like Exactly. And so that's considering our community, right? Our community really are people who want to work with us between usually 10 a.m. Eastern time to about 3 p.m. Eastern time. So, you know, that is our window. And so that's keeping our community in mind. Sure, would New Zealand, I would go to New Zealand. I think it'd be super duper fun and give me a 15 hour flight any day. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But that that doesn't check the box of our community being able to be built and loved and honored. So yeah. I love it. All right, Amy, let's talk about leadership style. This is the third one. Yeah. So this is really how you lead yourself, your team, and the vision. And it's really the key to deeply understanding what your team needs from you as a leader daily. And the more you know about what they need and how they work best, the more productive, efficient, cohesive your team will become. And I think when when we forget to continue to look at ourselves as a leader and our leadership style and how we are interacting with our team and we just get into that do, 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 do mode, that's really where it falls apart. And so I'm going to go back to the CEO coffee date that Shannon mentioned before. Part of that CEO coffee date really weekly helps us reflect on how we are as a leader. And so I think having those opportunities to reflect on your leadership style, your leadership skills, and know that as, again, as you grow and progress as a human, there may be times that you're like, I really want to double down and focus on this point or this part of my leadership ability because I'm feeling like this is where the growth can happen. But you're not going to have that on your awareness if you don't take time to reflect on yourself as a leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do a lot of journaling and reflection around different types of leadership stuff um, to help me see where my blind spots are. Um, I'm also stay in community with people who are, how do I want to say it? I don't, I don't need to be, or want to be the, the big fish in the small pond, right? I need to be the small fish in the bigger pond right. <laughs> with mentors who are leading bigger companies than I, or have that brighter vision than I've been able to articulate. Um, And I think that's really important because we can silo ourselves, y'all working at home from behind a zoom. And once you can get these three areas aligned and the overarching vision, which we talked about um, in a past episode, you will find that your decision making becomes much easier. The growth happens more naturally, and your team functions at a higher level. Mm-hmm. Amy, it was so funny because while I was in Phoenix, you were out in Minnesota, mm-hmm. and Maria picked me up and, from the airport, and she goes, "We had a really good team ma- meeting on Wednesday <laughs> because I- need because you and I weren't there." <laughs> Well, it was her first team meeting, right? Yeah. So y'all, my spouse, Maria has come in and she's doing some um, email marketing technology coaching with our club clients. Um, but anyway, she's like, that one's, it was really excited, like really uplifting to like be in community like that. And one thing I just thought of on the way home, I was, I was like, oh my God, I even forgot there was a team meeting. Guess what? I didn't need to remember. I wasn't leading it. Jordan had it under control. Um, they had a great discussion, but this is what I mean by your team can function at a higher level when you are a leader who trusts the people you've put into the positions on your team, right? Amy ran a call for me last week because I messed up my calendar and forgot I was speaking. We didn't have to make a big deal about it. She showed up and as far as I know, they went on as planned and it was fine, right? But it's because I trust Amy to show up and and do the call. So 
these, these, this is like the underlying energy and underlying currents, these three areas that are really going to be necessary for each and every one of you who is listening today to hone in, define, and tweak as you grow. All right. Now, Amy, let's talk about a pitfall. Yeah, I would say the biggest mistakes when you're expanding your business is not having clarity on your brand values, your brand culture, and your leadership style. And I do think people tend to avoid the deeper work that is really required to align the growth for the future of their business. So if you're so bogged down in the day-to-day -day of the business, um, the brand culture, the values, your leadership style almost gets pushed back to the back burner and out of your mind. And you don't really realize that you're handling things now and, and how you're handling and how you're training your team so that they can handle them for the future. So when you're really setting the stage for yourself and for your business to expand, you really want to look at your systems and processes and how your leadership style, how your brand culture and how your brand values really guides that. So you don't want to unintentionally create, you know, something that isn't going to align so I think it is, you've got to slow down to speed up. Yes. I used to hate it when people said that to me. I know it's so cliche, but it's so stinking true. Just like the word alignment. <laughs> it is. It's all true. <laughs> it is all true. I'm not one to slow down y'all, but I've had to work on that as a leader. I really have had to say, okay, we're slowing this whole thing down. My team cannot keep up with my manifesting generator ways. Exactly. There are so many times that I have to remind Shannon, like we can't keep up and process as quickly as you do as a man and as a manifesting generator. And so it is that gentle nudge too. And and that's part of Shannon's leadership. She she knows that she can trust that we're going to nudge her when when she's when she's pushing us out of alignment or her out of alignment. And again, it's it's that circle. It's not all relying on her shoulders as the leader because part of her leadership style is to make sure that we all have ownership. Yeah, absolutely. So y'all, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Um we have created a uh, a tool called the Business Expansion Scorecard. And we have created that tool to help you look at what is going really well in eight areas of your business in terms of our expand method versus where are your blind spots or where what's causing you to get all sticky and hung up in the web of things. Um, and I do want to say before I ask you to take the scorecard, this is not a three minute quiz. All right, this is not going to take you three minutes to do. I want you to imagine that yours truly is sitting right next to you as your personal business growth strategist for $10,000. And you are answering the question so you identify the exact gaps in your business. So this is going to take you about 15 to 20 minutes complete. There's 20 questions total. You can grab the scorecard at joyfulbusinessrevolution.com backslash scorecard. And so for our next episode, we are forgetting the vanity metrics. We're going to dial in on your profitability. So hold on to your seat until we see you next time. Adios.